You can turn in your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 26. What to do when a Christian friend turns out to be false? Hmm. Well, that can't happen. Anybody that says that they're a Christian, they're a Christian. They're just carnal or strong or something like this. I don't think so. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, let's read verse 26. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Are there false brethren? Yes. And you say, well, that's just you know heathen people. No, because he says heathen up here earlier in the verse. False brethren are not Roman Catholics or Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or Seventh-day Adventists or whatever. False brethren are people that look like Bible-believing Christians. And yet you examine them and they're false. They're fake. How do you know that? Turn to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in. Hmm. They'll sneak in? They'll infiltrate a group of Bible-believing Christians and lie? Happens all the time. Yeah, especially in this ministry. You know, <laughs> happens quite a bit. Who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. The group that's really being pointed out here in the book of Galatians, you know, is the group of people that they're basically Jews, and they're trying to get Gentiles to act like Jews. And then in reality, they're not acting like it either. They're not trying to be under the law and whatever else. Uh, today, you'd have your modern-day Hebrew roots occultist, uh, occultist, well, occultist, occultist, whatever. They get into the, you know, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, I'm thinking Talmud, but it's not Talmud. The um, Kabbalah. They'll get into some of the Kabbalah stuff and whatever. So it is technically a cult. But a lot of these Hebrew roots people, they come along and they start saying Yeshua. And then it goes from Yeshua to Yahashua and then to Yahawashi and uh, all these other names. And you go, who? <laughs> and they, all these things they come up with. And, oh, you got to do this and you got to keep the law. And you got you got to go back to the Torah and live under the Torah. Are you Torah observant? You know, and things. That's what's really being rebuked here in the book of Galatians. But... There's also a whole other group of people that they'll get you back under a different form of works, and that works is you can't repent. You say, what? How's that work? Uh, if you come out and you say, I mean, I've seen people, enemies of this ministry, and they'll say, they'll list this whole thing because I say, when you get saved, you come to the Lord as a sinner. You're broken. Contrition, you know. You get saved. You call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. God, please save me. When He saves you, he changes your life. Wow, you know, rocket science there, brain surgery. I mean, this is, you know, really difficult concept to get. When you get a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, with the creator of heaven and earth, your life changes. Wow. I know it's difficult to grasp, but try. <laughs> you know, and they'll, they'll, these people come along and they'll say, no, that, that, that can't be. Say, and I've said to these heretics before, uh, they'll they'll say um, you know you're not saved. And I say okay, what do I need to get saved? They say well you have to you have to believe in Jesus. I say I do believe in Jesus, okay. But then you you also have to not teach this and you have to get rid of this and you have to do that. And it, and it, oh, so we're works then. Mm -hmm. And then they'll claim that I'm teaching works because I say Jesus changes your life, you know, and it'll clean your life up. Sanctification, you know, it's incredible. But again, you see the thing of false brethren. And they creep in unawares. And how much easier is it to do it today than it was back there in the first century? And yet if it's going on back then, it's not going to happen today? Excuse me? Uh, yes, it will. Especially online. It's so easy for people to do this. And they can create so many different accounts on YouTube. And, you know, you can, I mean, we had our thing on Patreon and there were people creeping in there. And, and no matter what I do. And these people brag about, you know, we're going to we're gonna infiltrate, we're going to get in there and things. Why? I mean, are your lives that pathetic that you have to infiltrate groups of Bible-believing Christians to try and sow discord among the brethren? 
Really? I mean, you're you're that big of a loser? I guess apparently they are. Um, whatever. But uh, what do you do when you feel that? When all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, this brother or this sister, and, and you're having some real good fellowship. You know, you think that they're real. You're looking at their screen name. You might even see their picture. They might even make videos showing themselves, and you're saying, thinking, hey, this is really good. And and we both like Brother Brian's videos, or we both like Brother whoever, or we, we both like to this, or we both like that, and we have some real good fellowship here. And all of a sudden, just bam, they go, and they change, and they're now attacking the things that they used to say that they liked, and now, now they're against this, and they're saying all these things, and you're thinking, huh, you know, what do you do? Go to Matthew chapter 18. I mean, I've had it happen, you know, I think maybe once, maybe twice, you know. Or uh, maybe a few, you know, hundred times over the years. So I have a little bit of experience on this one. I can talk to people about it, what to do. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 17. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. We'll get back to this here in just a minute. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be un unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. And a lot of people say, Brian Dunlinger, he'll rebuke people and he'll expose people, but he doesn't go to them privately. Uh, do they know that? Um, I have actually, you know, bigger teachers and things on YouTube and whatever that are just spewing false doctrine. No, I don't go to them personally and things if they're spewing false doctrine. Why? Look at verse uh, 15. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, he sinned against you. All right? Preaching false doctrine is not trespassing against me personally. All right? It's just somebody that's out there, they're a false prophet. I'm going to expose that. But even with... You know, having said that, there have been bigger ministries that I have gone to before making any kind of rebuke or whatever else and said, hey, I'm being told this about you or I saw you say this or whatever else. And I go back and forth with them a little bit. And finally, they leave me no choice. And I say, I have to come out publicly and wash my hands and just say, I'm done. All right. I have had to do that. And there are some ministries that there has been some friction between us. I see them teaching false things. And I've gone back and forth a little bit and I don't come out and just, you know, uh, just all the wrath that I can, you know, form and just nail them. And I just, I, you know, no longer recommend their channel and I just walk away. All right. Um, again, people lie about me. They'll say, well, you know, Brother Brian thinks he's the only one that's saved. Oh, please <laughs> give me a break. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, there's a lot of people that I just kind of put in my question mark file. And the people, some brethren come out and say, oh, they're lost, they're lost, they're definitely going to hell. And I'm saying, I don't know. I've talked to these people, I know these people, you know, I, I knew them, I thought. But they've not trespassed against me personally, but they're wrong doctrinally in sinful areas and things, so I just have to kind of step back from that situation. But what's the goal of this whole thing of going to them? What's the goal of trying to patch things up if they're your friend? Verse 15, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Well, what's the opposite of gain? Lost. Um, you're going to lose friends. Again, I will tell you that just as plain as day. I've had some people and I thought, man, they're going to be with me till the end. They are a strong supporter of this ministry. And whoop, away they go. And, you know, some of them I've contacted. I don't just, just write people off and don't talk to me anymore, heretic. I don't do that. All right? And some of them I've had to come out and rebuke publicly because they do their best to convince me that they're lost. And so I say, okay, i got to say something about this situation because uh, they're going to hurt other people. And a lot of them, again, they, you know, they, they get mad at me and they'll just go and they'll start poisoning other people's minds and just trying to do as much damn as they, as they can. And I have to come along and say, hey, uh, I, yeah, I no longer recommend so-and-so because they turned against me. You know, and um, okay, other people I keep my mouth shut about. I just simply say, well, 
there's some major issues there, and I'm not going to try to destroy them or destroy the their work for the Lord that they have there and things. You say, are they saved? I don't know. I just kind of put them in my little file of, like I said, my little question mark file and just say, I don't know. Um, some people I have patched things up with after having some arguments and things, and, and well, what is that? Well, I've gained my brother or sister or whatever. You know, and I'm anxious to do that. I'm always anxious to do that. If they're not totally just going off the deep end and into doctrinal heresy, I'm anxious to restore fellowship again. Um, others, I've just had to write them off and just say, well, you know, if they're saved, I'll see them up there and they'll be straightened out then. Uh, if they're lost, well, okay. But uh, don't ever get to a place where you think to yourself, I have to hold on to this friendship and I have to compromise what I know to be the truth in order to hold on to this person. Don't ever compromise the truth. Never. All right. Galatians chapter 6. And here's the best advice that I can give to you, Bible believing Christian out there. Uh, we distance ourselves from those who just call themselves Christian. Um, because those people out there, they can they can be just little chameleons, you know. They can go to this church and fit in with that group, and they can say the right things, and they can use a new version, and they can do this, and they can do that. They're just always changing. But you determine it in your mind. I'm going to stick by the page or the the teachings of this King James Bible. I'm going to say the other new versions are satanic. They're from the Vatican. I'm going to do what the Bible tells me to do, and whatever. You're going to have a lot of people turn against you, and unfortunately, some of them they will come in to deceive you on purpose. They are like the uh, false brethren that come in unawares to spy out your liberty. They'll come in to spy out what you believe. They'll try to get close to you so that they can stab you in the back. You will get some of that. Uh, I heard it said the one time, you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you're going to have you know, sort of friends that are kind of like the disciples of Jesus Christ. You're going to have somebody like Peter that misrepresents you, you know, that loves you but misrepresents what you're trying to say or get out or whatever else. You're going to have a John, hopefully, <laughs> that is, you're truly, they're like a loving friend closer than a brother. Um, but you're going to have Judas Iscariots as well. Yeah. People that betray you. Come in and appear to be a friend, but then they betray you. But here's what you got to keep in mind. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault... Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Yeah. See, it's not about if a man be overtaken in false doctrine. It's in a fault. If your brother trespasses against you, you see. If they're overtaken in a fault there. You see a brother and you find out that he's looking at pornography or that they're, you know, whatever. I mean, They've lied about you or, or said some nasty things gossiped about you or something, told something to people that you said don't tell anybody about this or whatever else. There's all kinds of ways that believers can trespass against each other. And uh, be careful, especially about the thing of gossip. gossip. Gossip is a major problem in today's Christianity because of the comments and the, the Facebook and the, the YouTube and the, the, this and the that and whatever else. you got to be really careful about that stuff and what can happen. Consider thyself lest thou also be tempted. You can go to somebody and you can restore that fellowship, but then consider yourself. Don't go and blab the business that's private there, in other words. Verse 2, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. I love that verse. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Hmm. When it comes right down to it, brethren, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ someday at the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to give an account for your life. If you're married, well, there's a little bit of a thing there because you're going to be your one flesh with your wife. And so as a husband, um, I am responsible for my wife to provide for her and to lead her spiritually in things. But uh, I'm still going to be standing by myself at the judgment seat of Christ. Um, yes, 
I'm yoked up to my wife, but she's going to answer for some things that she's done in her life, and, and she's going to be rewarded, rewarded according to what she's done and whatever. I want to be rewarded and answer for things I've done, right? You must bear your own burden as a Christian, all right? You're going to have to stand someday before the Lord, and that's why you don't compromise when it comes to people who call themselves your friends. Somebody comes along and they want you to, to turn against this ministry when you've been blessed by this ministry, take a hike. You say, oh, but brother, we really were having some good fellowship. Okay, um, but if you've been blessed by this ministry, and you're a friend of this ministry, and somebody tries to turn you away, they're false brethren. You know, they are false brethren that have been brought in. You know, especially if they come in and they're all, oh, you know, I think Brother Brian's great and everything else, and all of a sudden they just start to pull people away and things. Uh huh. I've seen that for years and years and years. People falsely come in and try to be all buddy buddy and whatever else, and I see them trying to be friendly to some of you out there in the comments, and all of a sudden I see that subtle pull start to pull people away. I rebuked a guy on Patreon back when I had my Patreon page, and, uh, you know, had a friend of the ministry. I very much respected him. And all of a sudden, you know, he's, I see in the comments, you know, this guy's all saying to the friend of the ministry, hey, why don't you call me sometime? I'd like to talk to you about some stuff. Next thing I know, this guy is, is just sending me an audio message, just blasting me, just attacking me like crazy, calling me all kinds of names and, and just tearing me down. And I'm thinking, you didn't even give me a chance to say anything, to answer any of these accusations and whatever else. And you're just you're just attacking me, you know what happened? False brethren came in and started to sow seeds of division and discord among the brethren. Be very careful about that. Don't let your feelings and your emotions uh, blind you to the thing of your loyalties, so to speak. So. Uh, Remember that you're going to stand by yourself someday. And that's really all that matters. You say, well, brother, it gets pretty lonely when I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been through a little bit of that myself here, you know. Yeah, just, just a little bit. <laughs> and uh, you say, well, how do you keep going on? I think about Jesus. Jesus is my Savior. If all of you turn against me someday, all that really matters is, is Jesus. Am I still with Jesus? I'm always going to be saved. I'm not going to lose my salvation or anything. But I'm saying, am I in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, my God? And if the answer is yes to that, well, then let the rest of the world hate me. I pray you do the same.